guys, thanks for watching Precision Rifle Network today. Joel here again. I am going to, for my last video of 2020, I'm gonna do a top five of 2020. And this is my top five, uh, not just videos, but products that I reviewed uh, or builds or whatever. Uh, this is the top five things that stuck out to me uh, out of all of the videos, one every single week, sometimes two a week, all the videos that I made this year. So. Let's kick this off, and I'm going to be talking fast because uh, there's a lot of information to cover. I do need to preface this by saying these are not in any kind of order like this versus that or this is better than that. This is just five things, and the first one that I'm going to talk about is the Terminus Action. So I have had the Terminus Action now for over a year. This is the Terminus Zeus Short Action. It is a switch barrel design, which I love. So you could have one action and run multiple different calibers as long as they are, uh, you know, fired off the same bolt face. So you could have a six Creed more, you could have a 308, you could have a six five Creed more, you could have a six GT, all off of the same action just by swapping barrels out. Use the same chassis and everything. I love that. Another great thing with the Terminus Zeus action is the threaded trigger pins. It seems like such a small thing, but it makes trigger install and swap a breeze. I don't know why nobody thought about that before. My hat's off to Joel Russo over at Terminus for thinking of that. It also has a smaller bolt diameter. So the typical Remington 700 uh, bolt diameter is what it is. And then Terminus came along and made it just a tiny bit smaller. And what that does is it really helps with the feeding issues on uh, you know BR type cartridges, six millimeter GT, uh, six dasher, those sorts of things. And I found that to be true uh, for, my, uh, for my Terminus. And all the magazines that I tested, functioned well. I tested AICS, Accurate Mag, and MDT, and they all functioned flawlessly in the Terminus Action, so that's a great thing. Uh, last thing I'll say about the Terminus Action is that it has that 60 degree throw, uh, making it a smooth and fast action. And there are a lot more things to talk about with the Terminus Action, but that's all I'm going to cover today for this video, so that rounds out number one. Second thing I want to talk about here is the Zero Compromise Optics 5-27. to So I was able to pick this scope up uh, for a steal. They made me a deal uh, in exchange for the video, and I was able to purchase this scope uh, at a discount, and I will never look back, to be honest. It's the nicest scope, hands down, that I've ever owned or seen, uh, and I've seen most of them in person. <clears throat> First thing I will say is that it's got a 36 millimeter main tube, uh, which allows for 35 mils of internal elevation adjustment. Um, just to put that in perspective, if you're looking at shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor out to 1,000 yards, you're probably going to use about 8 mils. So to have 35 mils of internal ele ed elevation adjustment, um, that's impressive. Uh, next thing is kind of more of a personal preference, but I love the tactile and audible turret clicks. Just the feel of these turrets is amazing. Um, there's science that goes into that, and you guys can watch uh, my, my complete video on all of the sciencey stuff that goes into making the Zero Compromise Optics, optics if you want to know why the uh, turrets are the way they are on a Zero Comp scope. Uh, but suffice it to say, that's a feature that I love. The next thing is the reticle options. Uh, they have their MPCT-1, which is what I have in my scope. It is super clean uh, with all of the features that you need in a reticle and none of the things that you don't. Uh, the MPCT-2 and 3 are Christmas tree style. They're perfect for military applications or for competition, uh, you know, where you, you need all that extra data. And the last thing I'll say here about the Zero Compromise Optics scope is that the glass clarity, the contrast, and the coatings, uh, they're just awesome. Um, it has high-end shot glass. Think of, a, think of buying a diamond for your girlfriend or wife. You go into a diamond store and they're going to show you different clarity scale uh, for diamonds. And the higher up in the clarity scale you go, the higher the price of the diamond. Uh, shot glass is very similar in that respect. Zero Compromise picked a very high-end, clarity-wise, piece of glass uh, from Shot in order to build their scope. Not the highest end, because you don't need that, and if you did pick that, 
you'd make your scope five or six thousand dollars and what's the point the eye can't really see that kind of detail anyway um, again point you towards the video that i did explaining all the science behind the zero compromise but suffice it to say the glass is simply the best visual experience that i've ever had with an optic on the market uh, 92 percent light transmission uh, is one of the highest if not the highest out there uh, it's just a fabulous optic all right the next thing we're going to cover the tika lightweight build uh, again i will uh, link to a video below you can watch all three parts of that series of videos on building this lightweight tika just like anything the action is kind of your your framework right your foundation and i had this tika t3 in 6.5 creedmoor laying around and it had a completely shot out barrel and I was looking to do some of these sniper field matches and I was needing a lighter weight option. So I went in and worked with my channel sponsor, MDT, uh, to figure out a chassis. And the, the LSS chassis is one of the lightest weight uh, on the market. And uh, paired that with their um, AR style buttstock, their lightweight version. And that total package of the chassis and buttstock came in at like 2.8 pounds, making it one of the lightest on the market. So that's kind of how that all started. I took the old barrel off with, uh, <laughs> with much trouble. Uh, thanks again to Ryan Hunt of Hunt's Long Range in Somersville, Missouri for helping me get that barrel off. Those things are crazy hard to get off. Replaced it with a proof prefit carbon, uh, which you know just made it for for lightweight. Uh, chambered in six five or I'm sorry six creed more. Um, the, the gun just shoots. It shoots really well, guys, all day long. That's the easy button, and that's that's what I wanted it to do. The MDT has so much modularity. Uh, you can change that. You can add weight systems. You can add rails. You can you can change the butt stocks. You can change the grips. You can just make these things into what you want. So the MDT LSS is a fabulous chassis option that won't break the bank. It's lightweight. All the good things. Uh, shout out again to MDT for the chassis. Topped that rifle off with a Brownells MPO scope 3 to 18. This is a great scope, guys. I've got another video on it. Uh, it is a sub $1,000 scope with all the features that you want and need. It's, it's got good glass. It's not great glass like the Zero Compromise, but we're talking about a sub $1,000 scope, and it really is quite nice. Uh, it's also pretty lightweight compared to other optics out there. So, uh, you yeah, know, in the number three spot here was my Tika lightweight build. Really enjoyed that. Hope you guys did too. Next up, we have the 6.5 Grendel pistol build that I did. Now, what I really wanted was a kind of truck gun, uh, bug out, get home bag kind of gun. It needed to fit inside of the 45 liter Vertex contingency duffel. In there, there's a sleeve in the side for a carbine or small type uh, rifle. So I wanted to have something that would be uh, that would live in that pouch, in that pocket of that bag in my car most of the time, just to have it uh, available quickly. And so set out to build a gun that would be good for everything from clearing my house, close quarters, uh, on out to, you know, an appropriate amount of energy at distance to, uh, you know, heaven forbid, down humans uh, or animals or, or anything like that in an end of the world or bug out type of a situation where I'm having to defend my life. Uh, so 6.5 Grendel is that round. Um, so short size, uh, side folder, put a law tactical side folder on it. Uh, it's, uh, you know, paired it up with a, a Vortex uh, Razor HD Gen 2, uh, one to six low power variable optic up on top. Um, suppressed it, uh, works really well for that. Don't have to worry about wearing hearing protection. 6.5 Grendel pistol build was a lot of fun, and hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed that video as much as I did making it. Last thing in the number one spot is the Form 1 silencer. So the, the big thing with this, guys, is the time frame, right? If you have to wait on a Form 4 to come back for a store-bought suppressor, you're waiting a year. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. I mean, we, should, we need to do away with the ATF in its entirety. It's just a way for them to steal more of our tax money and have more control over us anyway. But with that being said, a Form 1 is kind of a way around that. You can fill out the Form 1 uh, through the ATF 
via their online tool uh, and, and pay them for that and have that signed and back in your hands, usually in less than a month. And then you can go to a place like Quiet Bore, like I did for my 22 can, and order that from them. And it comes as a solvent trap, quote unquote, um, you know, with K baffles and the tube and everything, but stuff is not drilled out yet. There's no holes in it because otherwise it would be a suppressor and that would be illegal. Um, but they give you this, this nice little precision jig uh, that you can drop the K baffles into and you can drill those out yourself. Uh, it's very pre precise and a very simple build process. Honestly, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Uh, the can is very quiet. Um, you know, even through long strings of fire with a 22 long rifle, it stays cool to the touch. High quality materials, um, machined aluminum, uh, you know, which of course is not good for big center fire because the, the heat and the pressure would destroy that thing, but it's plenty durable enough for the pressure and heat of a 22 long rifle. Uh, it's obviously lower cost because it's basically like a quote unquote 80%. Uh, you need to finish it out yourself, so the cost is a bit lower. Uh, around 200 bucks for that, and then another 200 for your Form 1 through the ATF, and you've got a $400 suppressor that works really well. Um, and of course, the most important thing, short wait time. So for me, it was about five weeks from start to finish, and I had a 22 long rifle suppressor. So those are my top five videos that I really enjoyed from 2020. Guys, thanks for watching all of them. Thanks for a good year, despite it being a, a COVID cursed year. I'm looking forward to 2021. Got some cool new things planned and I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. And uh, I just thank you in advance for continuing to subscribe and support and watch the videos. Merry Christmas, y'all. Happy New Year.